Rajput from Sanskrit Raja Putra, son of a king, is a large multi-component cluster of castes, kin bodies, and local groups, sharing social status and ideology of genealogical descent originating from the Indian subcontinent. The term Rajput covers various patrilineal clans historically associated with warriorhood. Several clans claim Rajput status, although not all claims are universally accepted. The term Rajput acquired its present meaning only in the 16th century, although it is also anachronistically used to describe the earlier lineages that emerged in northern India from 6th century onwards. In the 11th century, the term Rajaputra appeared as a non-hereditary designation for royal officials. Gradually, the Rajputs emerged as a social class comprising people from a variety of ethnic and geographical backgrounds. During the 16th and 17th centuries, the membership of this class became largely hereditary, although new claims to Rajput status continued to be made in the later centuries. Several Rajput-ruled kingdoms played a significant role in many regions of central and northern India until the 20th century. The Rajput population and the former Rajput states are found in north, west and central India. These areas include Rajasthan, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Jammu, Punjab, Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh and Bihar. In Pakistan they are found on the eastern parts of the country, Punjab and Sindh. History Origins. <laughs> 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 The origin of the Rajputs has been a much debated topic among the historians. Colonial era writers characterized them as descendants of the foreign invaders such as the Scythians or the Hunas, and believed that the Agnikula myth was invented to conceal their foreign origin. According to this theory, the Rajputs originated when these invaders were assimilated into the Kshatriya category during the 6th or 7th century, following the collapse of the Gupta Empire. While many of these colonial writers propagated this foreign origin theory in order to legitimize the colonial rule, the theory was also supported by some Indian scholars, such as D. R. Bhandarkar. The Indian nationalist historians, such as C. V. Vaidya, believed the Rajputs to be descendants of the ancient Vedic Aryan Kshatriyas. A third group of historians, which includes J. Narayan Asofa, theorized that the Rajputs were Brahmins who became rulers. However, recent research suggests that the Rajputs came from a variety of ethnic and geographical backgrounds. The root word, Rajaputra, literally, son of a king, first appears as a designation for royal officials in the 11th century Sanskrit inscriptions. According to some scholars, it was reserved for the immediate relatives of a king, others believe that it was used by a larger group of high-ranking men. Over time, the derivative term, Rajput, came to denote a hereditary political status, which was not necessarily very high. The term could denote a wide range of rank holders, from an actual son of a king to the lowest-ranked landholder. Before the 15th century, the term, Rajput, was associated with people of mixed caste origin, and was therefore considered inferior in rank to Kshatriya. Gradually, the term Rajput came to denote a social class, which was formed when the various tribal and nomadic groups became landed aristocrats, and transformed into the ruling class. These groups assumed the title Rajput as part of their claim to higher social positions and ranks. The early medieval literature suggests that this newly formed Rajput class comprised people from multiple castes. Thus, the Rajput identity is not the result of a shared ancestry. Rather, it emerged when different social groups of medieval India sought to legitimize their newly acquired political power by claiming Kshatriya status. These groups started identifying as Rajput at different times, in different ways. Emergence as a community Scholarly opinions differ on when the term Rajput acquired hereditary connotations and came to denote a clan-based community. Historian Brajadulal Chattopadhyaya, based on his analysis of inscriptions primarily from Rajasthan, believed that by the 12th century, the term Rajaputra was associated with fortified settlements, kin-based landholding, and other features that later became indicative of the Rajput status. According to Chattopadhyaya, the title acquired an element of heredity from c. 1300. 
A later study by of 11th-14th century inscriptions from Western and Central India, by Michael B. Bedner, concludes that the designations such as Rajaputra, Thakura, and Rauta were not necessarily hereditary during this period. During its formative stages, the Rajput class was quite assimilative and absorbed people from a wide range of lineages. However, by the late 16th century, it had become genealogically rigid, based on the ideas of blood purity. The membership of the Rajput class was now largely inherited rather than acquired through military achievements. A major factor behind this development was the consolidation of the Mughal Empire, whose rulers had great interest in genealogy. As the various Rajput chiefs became Mughal fedwatories, they no longer engaged in major conflicts with each other. This decreased the possibility of achieving prestige through military action, and made hereditary prestige more important. The word Rajput thus acquired its present day meaning in the 16th century. During 16th and 17th centuries, the Rajput rulers and their bards sought to legitimize the Rajput socio political status on the basis of descent and kinship. They fabricated genealogies linking the Rajput families to the ancient dynasties, and associated them with myths of origins that established their Kshatriya status. This led to the emergence of what Indologist Dirk Kolf calls the Rajput Great Tradition, which accepted only hereditary claims to the Rajput identity, and fostered a notion of elightness and exclusivity. The legendary epic poem Prithviraj Raso, which depicts warriors from several different Rajput clans as associates of Prithviraj Chohan, fostered a sense of unity among these clans. The text thus contributed to the consolidation of the Rajput identity by offering these clans a shared history. Despite these developments, migrant soldiers made new claims to the Rajput status until as late as the 19th century. In the 19th century, the colonial administrators of India reimagined the Rajputs as similar to the Anglo Saxon knights. They compiled the Rajput genealogies in the process of settling land disputes, surveying castes and tribes, and writing history. These genealogies became the basis of distinguishing between the genuine and the spurious Rajput clans. Rajput kingdoms The Rajput kingdoms were disparate, loyalty to a clan was more important than allegiance to the wider Rajput social grouping, meaning that one clan would fight another. This and the internecine jostling for position that took place when a clan leader Raja died meant that Rajput politics were fluid and prevented the formation of a coherent Rajput empire. The first major Rajput kingdom was the Sisodia ruled kingdom of Mewar. However, the term, Rajput, has also been used as an anachronistic designation for the earlier Hindu dynasties that succeeded the Gurhara Pratiharas, such as the Chahamanas of Shakambari, Nadal and Jailar, the Tomaras, the Chalukyas, the Paramaras, the Gahadavalas, and the Chandelas. These dynasties confronted the Ghaznavid and Gurid invaders during the 11th and 12th centuries. Although the Rajput identity did not exist at this time, these lineages were classified as aristocratic Rajput clans in the later times. In the 15th century, the Muslim sultans of Malwa and Gujarat put a joint effort to overcome the Mewar ruler Rana Kumba, but both the sultans were defeated. Subsequently, in 1518, the Rajput Mewar kingdom under Rana Sangha achieved a major victory over Sultan Ibrahim Lodi of Delhi Sultanate, and afterwards Rana's influence extended up to the striking distance of Palia Kar in Agra. Accordingly, Rana Sangha came to be the most distinguished indigenous contender for supremacy but was defeated by the Mughal invader Babur at Battle of Kanwa in 1527. From as early as the 16th century, Purbiya Rajput soldiers from the eastern regions of Bihar and Awa were recruited as mercenaries for Rajputs in the west, particularly in the Malwa region. <laughs> Mughal period Akbar's policy Akbar, Shah Jahan. After the mid-16th century, many Rajput rulers formed close relationships with the Mughal emperors and served them in different capacities. It was due to the support of the Rajputs that Akbar was able to lay the foundations of the Mughal Empire in India. Some Rajput nobles gave away their daughters in marriage to Mughal emperors and princes for political motives. 
For example, Akbar accomplished 40 marriages for him, his sons and grandsons, out of which 17 were Rajput Mughal alliances. Akbar's successors as Mughal emperors, his son Jahangir and grandson Shah Jahan had Rajput mothers. The ruling Sisadia Rajput family of Mewar made it a point of honor not to engage in matrimonial relationships with Mughals and thus claimed to stand apart from those Rajput clans who did so. Aurangzeb's policy Akbar's diplomatic policy regarding the Rajputs was later damaged by the intolerant rules introduced by his great-grandson Aurangzeb. A prominent example of these rules included the re-imposition of Jaziya, which had been abolished by Akbar. However, despite imposition of Jaziya Aurangzeb's army had a high proportion of Rajput officers in the upper ranks of the imperial army and they were all exempted from paying Jaziya the Rajputs then revolted against the Mughal Empire. Aurangzeb's conflicts with the Rajputs, which commenced in the early 1680s, henceforth became a contributing factor towards the downfall of the Mughal Empire. In the 18th century, the Rajputs came under influence of the Maratha Empire. By the late 18th century, the Rajput rulers begin negotiations with the East India Company, and by 1818, all the Rajput states had formed an alliance with the company. British colonial period The medieval bardic chronicles Kavya and Masnavi glorified the Rajput past, presenting warriorhood and honour as Rajput ideals. This later became the basis of the British reconstruction of the Rajput history and the nationalist interpretations of Rajput's struggles with the Muslim invaders. James Todd, a British colonial official, was impressed by the military qualities of the Rajputs but is today considered to have been unusually enamoured of them. In his Annals and Antiquities of Rajasthan, James Todd writes, What nation on earth could have maintained the semblance of civilization, the spirit or the customs of their forefathers, during so many centuries of overwhelming depression, but one of such singular character as the Rajput? Rajasthan exhibits the sole example in the history of mankind, of a people withstanding every outrage barbarity could inflict, or human nature sustain, from a foe whose religion commands annihilation, and bent to the earth, yet rising buoyant from the pressure, and making calamity a whetstone to courage. Not an iota of their religion or customs have they lost. Although the group venerate him to this day, he is viewed by many historians since the late 19th century as being a not particularly reliable commentator. Jason Freitag, his only significant biographer, has said that Todd is manifestly biased. The Rajput practices of female infanticide and sati widow immolation were other matters of concern to the British. It was believed that the Rajputs were the primary adherents to these practices, which the British Raj considered savage and which provided the initial impetus for British ethnographic studies of the subcontinent that eventually manifested itself as a much wider exercise in social engineering. In reference to the role of the Rajput soldiers serving under the British banner, Captain A. H. Bingley wrote Rajputs have served in our ranks from Plassey to the present day. 1899. They have taken part in almost every campaign undertaken by the Indian armies. Under Ford they defeated the French at Condor. Under Monroe at Buxar they routed the forces of the Nawab of Oudh. Under Lake they took part in the brilliant series of victories which destroyed the power of the Marathas. <laughs> <laughs> Independent India On India's independence in 1947, the princely states, including those of the Rajput, were given three options, join either India or Pakistan, or remain independent. Rajput rulers of the 22 princely states of Rajputana acceded to newly independent India, amalgamated into the new state of Rajasthan in 1949–1950. Initially the Maharajas were granted funding from the Privy Purse in exchange for their acquiescence, but a series of land reforms over the following decades weakened their power, and their Privy Purse was cut off during Indira Gandhi's administration under the 1971 Constitution 26th, Amendment Act. 
The estates, treasures, and practices of the old Rajput rulers now form a key part of Rajasthan's tourist trade and cultural memory. In 1951, the Rajput Rana dynasty of Nepal came to an end, having been the power behind the throne of the Shah dynasty figureheads since 1846. The Rajput Dagra dynasty of Kashmir and Jammu also came to an end in 1947, though title was retained until monarchy was abolished in 1971 by the 26th Amendment to the Constitution of India. The Rajput Rajputs, in states such as Madhya Pradesh are today considered to be a forward caste in India's system of positive discrimination. This means that they have no access to reservations here. But they are classified as an other backward class by the National Commission for Backward Classes in the state of Karnataka. However, some Rajputs too like other agricultural castes demand reservations in government jobs, which so far is not heeded to by the government of India. Subdivisions The term, Rajput, denotes a cluster of castes, clans, and lineages. It is a vaguely defined term, and there is no universal consensus on which clans make up the Rajput community. In medieval Rajasthan the historical Rajputana and its neighboring areas, the word Rajput came to be restricted to certain specific clans, based on patrilineal descent and intermarriages. On the other hand, the Rajput communities living in the region to the east of Rajasthan had a fluid and inclusive nature. The Rajputs of Rajasthan eventually refused to acknowledge the Rajput identity claimed by their eastern counterparts, such as the Bundelas. The Rajputs claim to be Kshatriyas or descendants of Kshatriyas, but their actual status varies greatly, ranging from princely lineages to common cultivators. There are several major subdivisions of Rajputs, known as Vanch or Vamsha, the step below the superdivision Jati. These Vanch delineate claim descent from various sources, and the Rajput are generally considered to be divided into three primary Vanch. Suryavanshi denotes descent from the solar deity Surya, Chandravanshi from the lunar deity Chandra, and Agnavanshi from the fire deity Agni. The Agnavanshi clans include Parmar, Chaulakya Salanki, Parahar and Chohan, lesser noted Vanch include Udevanshi, Rajvanshi, and Rishavanshi. The histories of the various Vanch were later recorded in documents known as Vamshavalis. Andre Wink counts these among the status-legitimizing texts. Beneath the Vanch division are smaller and smaller subdivisions, Kul, Shak, Branch, Komp or Kanpi, Twig and knack twig tip marriages within a kul are generally disallowed with some flexibility for kul mates of different gotra lineages the kul serves as the primary identity for many of the rajput clans and each kul is protected by a family goddess the kuldevi lindsay harlan notes that in some cases shocks have become powerful enough to be functionally kuls in their own right topic Culture and ethos The Bengal Army of the East India Company recruited heavily from upper castes such as Brahmins and Rajputs, however, after the revolt of 1857 by the Bengal sepoys, the British Indian Army shifted recruitment to the Punjab. The Rajputs were designated as a martial race in the period of the British Raj. This was a designation created by administrators that classified each ethnic group as either martial or non-martial, a martial race, was typically considered brave and well built for fighting, whilst the remainder were those whom the British believed to be unfit for battle because of their sedentary lifestyles. <laughs> Rajput lifestyle The double-edged scimitar known as the Khanda was a popular weapon among the Rajputs of that era. On special occasions, a primary chief would break up a meeting of his vassal chiefs with Khanda Nariyal, the distribution of daggers and coconuts. Another affirmation of the Rajput's reverence for his sword was the Karga Shapna, adoration of the sword, ritual, performed during the annual Navaratri festival, after which a Rajput is considered free to indulge his passion for rapine and revenge. The Rajput of Rajasthan also offer a sacrifice of water buffalo or goat to their family goddess Kuldevta during Navaratri. The ritual requires slaying of the animal with a single stroke. 
In the past, this ritual was considered a rite of passage for young Rajput men. Rajputs generally have adopted the custom of purda, seclusion of women. Alcoholism is considered a problem in the Rajput community of Rajasthan, and hence Rajput women do not like their men drinking alcohol. It was reported in a 1983 study of alcoholism in India that it was customary for Rajput men, not all, in northern India to drink in groups. The women would at times be subjected to domestic violence such as beating after these men returned home from drinking. During the British rule their love for pork i.e. wild boar was also well known and the British identified them as a group based on this. By the late 19th century, there was a shift of focus among Rajputs from politics to a concern with kinship. Many Rajputs of Rajasthan are nostalgic about their past and keenly conscious of their genealogy, emphasizing a Rajput ethos that is martial in spirit, with a fierce pride in lineage and tradition. <laughs> Rajput politics Rajput politics refers to the role played by the Rajput community in the electoral politics of India. In states such as Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, Uttarakhand, Jammu, Himachal Pradesh, and Gujarat, the large populations of Rajputs gives them a decisive role. Arts The term Rajput painting refers to works of art created at the Rajput ruled courts of Rajasthan, Central India, and the Punjab hills. The term is also used to describe the style of these paintings, distinct from the Mughal painting style. According to Ananda Kumaraswamy, Rajput painting symbolized the divide between Muslims and Hindus during Mughal rule. The styles of Mughal and Rajput painting are oppositional in character. He characterized Rajput painting as popular, universal, and mystic. Rajput painting varied geographically, corresponding to each of the various Rajput kingdoms and regions. The Delhi area, Punjab, Rajasthan, and Central India each had its own variant. <laughs> See also